What is going on, all my movie-loving badasses out there? It's your boy Preston, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another episode, hanging out with me. That's right, I got two legends here, hanging out with me in the movie dojo. I will let the legends introduce themselves. Go for it, brothers. Mike Cheslick, the director of Hundreds of Beavers. Sorry to interrupt you, Preston. Thank you for having us. Yes, and I am Ryland Brixen Cole Twos, and I am the Fallen Star co-writer and producer of Hundreds of Beavers. Yes, yes, and... Man, this movie really knocked me out. It kind of came out of nowhere for me because I came, I, I came across the trailer and I was like, what is this? What is this glorious insanity I'm seeing in this trailer right now? Like, oh, my goodness. And I was like, I got it. I got it. I have to see this. I have to watch this. I have to watch this. And you know how the younglings say today, they'll show a clip from a movie or something. And, and what they say nowadays is, this is cinema. Well, I guarantee <laughs> I guarantee you, guarantee you, all of you that are watching this episode right now and listening to this on Spotify, as soon as you get done watching this movie, you're going to say the same damn thing. This is cinema. It, 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 was so, it was so bizarre looking and weird, the trailer, that I was like, I'm not doing this by myself. So I actually brought in my wife. I was like, sit down. We're going to watch this together because she's like me. We like the same type of movies, right? And by the time we got done watching it, we were quiet as soon as it finished and we both stopped and looked at each other and we were like, this, this has to be our favorite movie of the year so far. Whoa. Like this has to be like, so far, this is our favorite film of the year. I mean, just well done. Well done brothers. How Thank did you, you come yeah, up? Man. Yeah. How did you come up with the concept for this? I hope I watch like nine more of your interviews where you say exactly that to like nine other filmmakers. <laughs> oh, not, not everyone gets this kind of treatment. That's right. That's right. But yeah, uh, I don't say that all the time in terms of this is my favorite film of the year. <laughs> I mean it for uh, hundreds of beers though, man. So, so tell us, tell us about, you know, how did you come up with the script and the story and how did this come about, man? Well, it was 2019. It was right after the premiere of Lake Michigan Monster at the Milwaukee Film Fest. We were at the Landmark Lanes Bar in Milwaukee talking about what our next project should be. And uh, I, you know, it's hazy at this point. It's been five years, but basically we felt that there wasn't enough snow based slapstick and someone <laughs> needed to step forward and revive the dying uh, American genre of snow based slapstick that so far had only had one entry, the Donald Duck short where they have a snowball fight. <laughs> it's time for the second and final entry in the snow-based slapstick subgenre. Yes. And, uh, we, the, we, we've hopefully completed the subgenre. Oh my goodness. 
yeah, I just I really enjoyed it. Again, you know, the the, the musical numbers were a lot of fun. Definitely had that cannibal the musical vibe. You know, we gotta we gotta get that in there. But we love, you know, we love slapstick type of comedy. And this movie right here is slapstick comedy done right. It's not easy to do. You know, you, you, if somebody just trips and falls on their head, you may not get a laugh. <laughs> but the way you guys do it in the film, it's hilarious. And it's, you know, I stayed away from reviews. I wanted to go in and, you know, experience it for myself. You know, I didn't want anything to get spoiled or ruined. Uh, but after we loved the hell out of the movie, later on, I started watching other people's reviews and Film Threat loved it, Screen Anarchy, and you even have a YMS. That guy's got millions of followers, millions of subscribers, and he was recommending your movie to, to everyone in his videos. So, man, it's not just me. It's not just Samurai Guy, you know, that really enjoyed the film, man. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. A Adam from YMS, like we had a screening at uh, Fantasia in Montreal and we were doing some bit because we do a little comedy and wrestling during some of the shows. And we did a bit afterwards where my buddy Tyler was like walking through the audience during the Q&A shouting over us, selling merch like hot dog guy at a ball game yeah and yeah yeah adam was the first person to like stand up and do the like ball game bit and buy merch as if it was a hot dog <laughs> and uh, amazing we, we we didn't know it was him until later we were like oh the yeah. guy that got the hot dog bit was funny and then we found, <laughs> oh, that's the guy that hates everything and he thought yours was fine <laughs> oh man but yeah positive feedback all around and there's something very original about the film too as well it's kind of like why it's one of our favorite films of the year you know because it's just like ah there's there's hope there's hope for the movies <laughs> there's hope for cinema we can have something original fun crazy out there and again you know obviously you know i want people that are watching this interview i want you guys to go see this film but uh so i can't talk spoilers unfortunately uh but you will not be disappointed and what I really loved about the film, though, is that, yeah, it has the slapstick comedy. <laughs> a lot of stuff was busting us up. But the visual, the visual aesthetic, man, very Monty Python vibe, too. My wife's a big, huge Monty Python fan. It was almost like you were watching a live action cartoon on screen. Was yeah, that the goal, uh, Ryland? Oh, totally. Yeah, totally the goal. Yeah. Uh, our DP, Quinn Hester, is a, a soldier of cinema. And he survived the 12 week winter shoot uh, without complaining even once. And uh, yeah, it brought all these high contrast black and white images from my little storyboards into reality. Yeah, and it was kind of like um, we wanted to just meld together all this actual uh, shooting we did in northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan in the woods and meld that together with green screen elements to make this very cohesive look to the movie. And it's just one of those things where if you can get the audience to buy into this like lo-fi look uh, early on, then you can create very large worlds and you can get away with doing, you know, 1500 effect shots uh, in, again, a lo-fi style. And I think people find that endearing that it looks the way it does, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of these movies that uh, it, it looks very different than anything else coming out. And I think that was sort of one of the ideas of, that's going to sort of set us apart from what everyone else is doing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and, and I think, like you said, so right, right when you see the trailer, you're just like, wow, this is like nothing else happening right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, well said, well said. Perfect. And, you know, we were talking we were discussing afterwards. We were just like, man, because some of the action set pieces that you have in this film, we were kind of like, I mean, did you guys storyboard every set piece? I mean, oh, how yeah. long did it take? I mean, this must have been insane. Oh, yeah. The whole together. Thing started, we just shot the boards, stuck to the boards. Regarding action set pieces, I think day one of film school, everyone's sitting down, professor comes in. He should say, you owe your audience a chase scene set piece. If you're not making a gag-driven chase scene set piece in your film, yeah. Leave my classroom. Yes, get out. That's day one. Right. <laughs> day, day two is uh, day two. You just watch the burbs, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a fuck off day. <laughs> I love burbs. It's one of my favorites. Love the burbs. This is Walter. Ah, love it. <laughs> love. We could quote movies all day. Uh, I know we're here to talk about uh, you know, hundred beavers, but I mean, let's just have a little bit of fun here. 
What's some of your guys' favorite comedies or movies in gen- any genre? What's like some of your favorite? Half of the Burbs, like the middle of the Burbs, like the end of the Burbs. <laughs> no Burbs remake. <laughs> That's right. Don't do I it. Like Miracles with Jackie Chan. I like Sherlock Jr. with Buster Keaton. Let's go. Yeah. Hot right. Rod. I like yeah. when he falls down the hill in Hot Rod. Yeah. I like when they say cool beans in Hot Rod. <laughs> hot so, Rod. Yes. Uh, yes. What are your favorite? We love what, Monty Python what, and the Holy Grail. Yeah. What about oh, you? Yeah, Holy Grail is definitely in our top, both of our top tens. Huge, huge inspiration. And then, you know, we we took a lot of stuff, uh, especially for our first movie, Lake Michigan Monster. We did, a, you know, Guy Madden was a big um, inspiration for us. We just, we, we like, uh, again, uh, this lo-fi aesthetic too that, like I said, makes, lets you make a bigger world than it already is. And uh, some of the the early, I mean, again, everyone likes silent film. Everyone likes Buster Keaton. Everyone likes Harold Lloyd and, and uh, Charlie Chaplin. And for some reason, people got it in their minds like, oh, well, of course, you can't make a movie like that anymore. And it's like, well, why not? Everyone likes those movies. You know, so what a yeah. hundred years ago, you know, we can just let's just do it again. And yeah. so we found that, uh, yeah, people are, are hungry for this physical comedy, no dialogue. Yes. Uh, been able to play around the world. And yeah, people have been been really laughing well, onto it. You know what else is so funny, Preston? Let's let's get off of hundreds of beavers for a second. Let's do it. Uh, I as I've matured in my older as I've matured, I've I've really grown up and realized that the Roger Moore Bond movies are the best. And I think every one of those is like my is like the funniest, best movie. And uh, I, I think we're just trying to bring the Roger Moore action set piece philosophy to silent film. And uh, hopefully we've hopefully we've done a fraction of what we said. Yeah, yeah I love Roger Moore, man. He, he, he winked at the audience and it was fun. They need, to, they need to bring back a really old bond that's like a lot more like <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> like you know, it's a lot sillier the whole Bond thing, and um, yeah, I, I just think if we and and I, don't stop me, I'm gonna not talk about Beavers. I'm gonna do five minutes on this. No, we're having fun, man. What's no, your favorite of the Roger Moore Bonds. What what is it? What's your favorite of the Roger Moore Bonds? You know, he he is a little bit more comedic, which I, I like about that about him because it's he's different from the others. You want you don't want the same thing over and over again, right? And uh, I would say, uh, but but still. Even though he's a little, little bit of winks at the camera and chews the scenery, there's legit great Bond movies underneath Roger Moore. You have uh, For Your Eyes Only. That's mm-hmm. great. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me is legit. That's what brought in Jaws. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, man. He's got legit great Bond movies. So. I love the all the action set pieces in all in all of those. I think they're all incredible. Uh, and actually, you no, know, Moonraker is a triumph. Of <laughs> I, can, I cannot put wrap my head around how they did those space battles yeah yeah <laughs> for sure and, it, and i don't know why it's like it's such a cheesy movie but i just can't stop smiling watching it yeah beavers has a uh, goldfinger and beavers has uh you only live twice in it uh, the musical scores the volcano layer oh okay okay but it's uh, there's some, some of the music uh i enjoyed in uh beavers as well uh, did you ha- did you actually have a composer, or did you pick certain tracks to match certain scenes? It's a lot from the DeWolf Music Library. They've been around forever. Uh, like Monty Python and the Holy Grail is all scored from DeWolf Library tracks. So are a lot of Shaw Brothers movies. Yes. So you just said Shaw Brothers. Library. Yeah, we're, love, bro- love. We're, we're brothers now because you said Shaw <laughs> Brothers. That's it. Are you a Golden Harvest guy or a Shaw Brothers guy? <sighs> Man, you got to put me on the spot. Put put samurai guy on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'm getting interviewed now. <laughs> um, man, I you know I love them both equally, but when I when I think of Shaw Brothers, I think of period piece, pure kung fu type of mm-hmm. movies. A diagram pole fighter, Third Six Chamber of Shaolin. When I think of Golden Harvest, I think of more modern day uh, martial arts like yeah. uh, Wheels on Meals, Eastern Condors, and stuff like that. But I, I love both, you know. If you if you say I got you got to put me on a desert island and I have to choose, ah. Well, you explain explain the difference succinctly. I, yeah, I think. Oh, and for music, we also did have original an original composer, Chris Ryan, who's super talented, okay. and he did all the cabin scenes. And he, I don't know, he did like nine scenes. Anytime there was like a lot, the character themes 
And anytime we had a lot of little emotional changes in a short amount of time, that was Chris Ryan doing great original work. He's brilliant. And then the sound designer that's dealing with all these music tracks is Bob Barreto, who's like the shining star from our from my year at NYU. And uh, he'll win an Oscar one day for sound design. But he did nine months on the sound design of Beavers uh, using a lot of original sounds and then the DeWolf and Chris Ryan stuff. And yeah. oh, there's a song at the opening written by Ryland's dad, a not famous musician from Milwaukee. No way. That's awesome. <laughs> but I'm uh clear that Wayne Twos is not famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to to Ryland's dad. Yeah, shout out to Ryland's dad. Uh but yeah, back to Beavers. I, I see I can I can already tell I could talk movies with these uh gents all day. But it's what this channel's all about. But back to Beavers, what I really enjoyed also about the film is that it's very simplistic at times, which brings the fun. But then again, you get the action set pieces later, and we were, like, we were just like, how did they, it look kind of complicated? We were like, how did they storyboard this? How long did they put this together? It's so imaginative. But another thing that I liked about this movie, I don't know if any other interviewers asked you guys this recently, but what I like about the film is that, yes, it's got the slapstick comedy. Yes, it's got the goofy awesomeness, but it doesn't treat its audience like they're idiots. And there's things, not to spoil anything, there's things that me and my wife are like, I see what they're doing. I see what they're doing there. <laughs> you set up certain things earlier in terms of storytelling and character arc development, and then it comes right back to it later in the movie. And I was like, that's awesome. That's nice. You know, especially when you have a lot of scenes where there's no dialogue. You're, you're, you're not treating the audience like you're you're dumb. We got an exposition every five seconds because you're stupid, <laughs> audience. You're stupid. Bright colors. Jingle the keys. But I don't have any keys. But uh, special effects, jingle keys because you're dumb. <laughs> but I like that about the movie. I was like, dude, this movie, there's so much to this film. It was so unexpected, man. Thanks. Oh, it's getting those runners. Yeah, just focusing on those running jokes is a big part of the writing process of stuff that comes back later. And yeah, I guess if you went to the bathroom, you might miss one of the beats of one of the running jokes. Yeah. Yeah, that was always sort of the, the thought process is we wanted to just show the actual in real time, like the the zero to hero journey. You yeah. Know? Not only does that plug into like modern day like video games, like RPGs and stuff, but it also uh, plugs into the fact that that's how actual trap lines work for fur trappers is you have, you know, a series of stops and you set all your traps and then you have to come back the next day and do the whole trap line and you have to see, oh, did my trap work? Ah, oh, it didn't quite work. I have to make an adjustment and you have to do that over and over and over again until you start trapping, you know, beavers essentially. Right. But because my character's not good at his job, he has to do it in this roundabout funny Rube, Goldberg, Bol, Rube Goldbergian way, yeah. uh, you know, which that's that's where the comedy lies. Um, but yeah, we didn't want to do like a quick uh, Rocky Four montage. We wanted to actually show the entire process. Yeah. So maybe to spell it out to the audience more, we could have done flashbacks to the previous beat of every runner every time a joke happened. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we trusted the audience in that way of not yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was really impressed with it. But since you brought up Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest and you said you said Jackie Chan's Miracles, hey, this channel right here, I've interviewed many martial artists, stuntmen, you know, uh, filmmakers, directors, Isaac Florentine, Jesse B. Johnson, Marco Zoror, you know, these Jude Poyer, Art Camacho, so many legends. Uh, I was very honored to have them on the, on my show. And this channel is all about supporting these guys and these stuntmen. And again, you got the slapstick comedy. You got the fun storytelling, the character arc, the, the fun music, the chase sequence, which was great. And then, not to spoil too much, towards the end, you guys threw down. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, wait a minute. This is an actual fight. We got an actual <laughs> fight with stunts. You're getting thrown up against the wall, things smashed over your head. And I was like, this is legit stunts and stunt work. I was so impressed, man. How how hard was that to put that scene? You know what scene I'm talking about? 
Yeah, yeah. I got a plug art. You would love our fight choreographer. I I'm so sorry he's not with us. You gotta oh. get him on, maybe. John Trey is brilliant. Okay. Did that okay. fight. And the next, the whole next movie we're gonna do is gonna just be like six John Trey fights. Yes. We had so much fun doing that Bieber's fight. That was the highest high on the whole movie, was doing the fight and pulling the footage from the fight into the NLE during lunch and after the work day. Yeah. And we, we had a ball. And that was like all our buddies, uh, everybody playing the Beavers during the fight. And John Trey did a great job. And I don't know, that was like, that was one of the highest highs of my whole like filmmaking career. Yeah, and he's just like a steel trap for anything having to do with Golden Harvest, Shaw Brothers. I mean, he's seen everything. And so he was just, he was just the, he's just a really energetic guy who's just all about fight choreography. And so he was the man for the job to, to do this like uh, barroom brawl essentially. And it, it goes beyond just his ability to fight choreograph, but he knows like where to put the camera uh, and, you know, uh, how to edit together. Uh, Cause it's a little bit different when you're, when you're doing when you're editing a fight scene, uh, specifically like a Kung Fu fight scene, like where to right. cut and everything so you get like the highest impacts and all this and yeah wrapping the footage so it's a little bit faster a little bit more energetic like all these little all this little minutiae he knows about kung fu fight so we got together with our buddies to do this fight scene i mean it was i mean we were dying laughing uh when mike was doing the edit it was a lot of fun john's been prolific on internet fight forums for the last 20 years and knows a lot of people that have worked in that in that arena and this is nice uh, I mean, this fight that he did for the Beaver movie, we we're like so happy with and had so much fun that now we just, oh, and John's also the live Beaver performer. When we do the road show and we go and do some wrestling live at these screenings, it's always John in the Beaver costume. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, shout out to John. Big, we're going to call him Big John now. That's shout right. out to John. Well, now right. you got me. You got to get John Trey on your show. He's hey, well, you already said there's like five fight scenes in your next project. So when your next project comes out, Please come back to the dojo and bring John with you. Let's go. Perfect. And on my show, you know, you can talk as long as you want. <laughs> you talk and as John will you. talk as long as you let him. John will go for and curse on your show. You can curse. Have fun. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Be yourselves. Yeah, drink, drink a beer. Uh, but uh, yeah, I that the smile that I already had following our, you know, our uh, protagonist on his adventure. And then you get to that fight scene. My, my, I was like Joker smile at this point. You know, I was like walking Phoenix, like, like I was doing the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. That fight too is like, it's not, you know, it's not Kung Fu. It's not a bunch of, it's not a bunch of moves. It's just based on big impacts, which is very American. Like a, the saloon bar brawl, you know, yeah. giant funny impacts with like breakaway stuff. Yes. And that there's like some great, some great bar fights and Westerns and like, Oh yeah. yeah. So he's he loves his Hong Kong, but he did this very like American style yeah. arm Road, roll. Roadhouse. <laughs> Big yeah. Roadhouse. Giant funny impacts with yeah. giant sound effects. Yeah. We and just needed Ryland to rip a throat out or something. A beat yeah. throat. <laughs> yeah. That's in so wild. That's the sequel. We'll do that in the sequel. Movie, it starts like a normal movie, and then you get a throat rip. See? <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but uh thanks again for you know, not just giving us that fight, but filming the fight. That's one of my big pet peeves here on the channel. Filming the fight. You can actually see the action. What? What? You can see the fight choreography. You can see the stunt work, you know, because I hate it when there's too much quick cut editing, when there's too much shaky, so shaky cam, and you can't see what they're doing. You're wasting yeah. the stuntmen's talents. Well, they're hiding that. Well, sometimes they're hiding their shitty stuntman. No, I don't know. I, you're just like, you know. It's harder in the wide, yeah. but we're in a situation. We're in a we're in a privileged situation where if the Beaver choreography is bad, it's a little funny. So to be <laughs> in the wide for us, there aren't there aren't any bad there. There's not there's no severe consequence for our for a clumsy action from the Beaver because that's also funny. But yeah. if you're trying to do a fight that's precise and cool, and you're in the wide, it has to like be good. But with hundreds of Beavers, you know, we get a little leeway where you're in the wide and it's a beaver fighting a guy so if it's not perfectly yeah. it's still just funny am i wrong no you totally it? no it anytime the beavers are, are clumsy that's inherently funny so right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what you know what the fight reminded me of it reminded me of they live yeah the fight with roddy piper and keith david 
in terms of you have that comedic part in that fight and it's brutal and fun, but then it kept going. <laughs> like, as soon as you thought, okay, the fight's going to end now. And then it kept going, which <laughs> made it more like funny. Five minutes of the runtime of your movie. It's just this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, great stuff. What are your favorite fights? Oh, uh, let's see. I would have to say uh, Jackie Chan versus Benny uh, the Jet or Kitas from Wheels on Meals. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, there's so many. You so like the, the end fight sequence in the uh, the raid. You have the two on one. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. The two on one is classic kung fu movie. It's okay. You know, sometimes people are like, "Oh man, they're gonna put, they're gonna they gotta gang up on the, the the villain is badass." Okay, the villain takes everybody out, so it's okay. The hero's got to team up. <laughs> but uh, what about you? What about you? I like gag driven stuff more, you know, like I like a string together, a, a strung together, like series of gags. Uh, so it's not, it's less about athleticism, like the end of police story Two. you know, it's not, it's not about, it's not actually about martial arts at that point. It's just these giant gags and stunts one after yeah. another that are very yeah. clever and based on the, based on these big like rigs and the set pieces and mm-hmm. stuff. I just like that. I just like big big goofy set pieces or like the rope fight and miracles and like stuff like that. And like to, to go off that too, it's like, we kind of want to implement this, this idea with Jackie Chan where it's like, it's not just, he's doing all this great fighting, but he's getting hurt himself a lot. Yeah. And he's of his element a lot. Right. And he, you, you see that on his face constantly. Like, yeah, even, even if he's winning the fight by the end, he takes a beating. Like it's not easy. And yeah, I think a lot of times with action scenes is like the movie almost comes to a halt. Okay, now I have to do the action scene. Okay, now back to the movie. But like the action in the action scene uh, should be tied into the, the story narratively. And you should still feel for your character and he should still be an underdog, which yes. Jack always is. And it's the same thing with like the, the silent guys like Chaplin, Buster Keaton. They're always the underdog. You know, you're always rooting yeah. for so. Yeah, yeah, you know, Police Story 2 is a classic. Project A. Absolutely. The, the stunt work in Project A is just like, how, this is insane. We're di- we're ditching John Trey's Project A screening today to be here for this interview. Oh, well, I appreciate but, it. We've only seen it eight times. Well, that was another, <laughs> well, that was another I mean, that was another inspiration because they literally do a bar brawl in Project A, which is fantastic. Yeah. Him and Dude, you and I you going at fight. it. I don't know. John also just likes to have hot takes. And he was ragging on the bar fight from Project A last night. And I think it was just to be controversial. <laughs> loves it. It's like, it's great. Uh, especially now that it's in the correct aspect ratio. Yeah. yeah. Are you collecting these region two, all the great Blu-rays that we've gotten from Hong Kong stuff in the last six years? Yeah. Like there weren't good editions of some of it for so long. Now we're finally getting the, you know, uncropped. Age mm-hmm. uh, original soundtrack versions of all these movies on yeah. from like eighty eight film yeah Eureka Eureka yeah. Is, I have a lot of those yeah well, one of my one of my close buddies Frank Jang he does a audio commentary for all those movies I mean he's he's oh, so yeah. we call him the commentary beast because he's <laughs> always like any Blu Ray Frank Jang is there but speaking of Project A I think that's get both movies are getting a four K release soon which is insane. Oh my goodness yeah, for project I'll just, a i'll just go ahead and own six copies of project <laughs> <A>. <laughs> right uh but uh big trouble little china i don't know how many times i bought that movie over and over and over again uh but yeah man this is look at these, these guys are awesome we can talk martial arts and action movies all day uh but we unfortunately ah this pains samurai guy i have to end it because <laughs> these guys have an extremely busy day but hey hey seriously um it's nice to have films like this. We need movies like this. And uh, hopefully we get more. You know, I cannot wait now uh, to see your next project. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, it, it took a lot of hard work. And, uh, you know, we appreciate that. You know, we're rooting for you guys over here, man. You know. Thanks so much. That's really nice to say. Really, that I really appreciate it. And that does totally motivate us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Anything you guys like to say uh, to your fans and followers before we wrap it up? Just do one final five minutes on Roger Moore. <laughs> uh, Respect also, Roger Moore, God damn it! But yeah, go ahead. Stop being too cool for Roger Moore. Grow yeah, like Roger Moore. Yeah, 
Uh, but also, you know, if you go to hundredsofbeavers.com, you can see where the movie's playing. Uh, we're playing, I think in total now, we're up to like 80 different cities in the U.S. and Canada. We're, we're adding more cities all the time. So go on our website and check out to see if Beavers is playing in a cinema near you. Uh, you know, you can find us on social media, Hundreds of Beavers. And then also, you know, it'll be available uh, early April to, to rent and stream. And then this summer it'll be available on Blu-ray. Yes, yes. Uh, digitally first or oh, at the same time digital and physical release uh you, you know what i actually think you'll be able to i think in early april you'll be able to rent it and purchase it digitally all right everybody watching check out 100 beavers baby put links in the description box below so you can follow these awesome gents and if you enjoyed yourself don't forget to like share and subscribe to the old samurai guy keep watching action movies martial arts movies Support these guys here. That's right. Support comedic slapstick awesomeness and badassity. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.